Sydney. And I'm Maddie. And we're going to be doing Kid Foundation with you guys for the next eight weeks. We are so excited. See, See you in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> Welcome to week six of Kid Food Nation. So excited to be back again. So we are going to start by quickly going over what we covered last week. So we need to think a little more again about why it's important to consider where our foods come from. So we need to remember how that food is grown or where we get it and how that all has an impact on our environment and our community. Um, what are all our different sources of where we get our food in our communities? So we have our farms, our supermarkets, our just markets, our gardens, the ship goods, all those fun things. And then before we completely start and learn our new things, we're just going to take a minute to remember our individual goals that we were either working on from a few weeks ago or that we changed and set again last week to kind of meet our needs. So we'll just kind of take a minute. This week we are going to be focusing in on some more of our chef skills. So we are going to kind of take our own time if you want to practice some of them, if you're already familiar with some, that's all right too. So you can set up your own little stations at home to practice these super fun new skills that we're learning. So our new skills this week are mashing, kneading, um, sieving, and separating. So for mashing, if you wanted to grab a maybe a banana or avocado or something kind of of the same texture, and a fork, you can go ahead and just mash it. So again, you can set that up if you need to work on that. And then for kneading, we will also be doing this in our recipe a little bit later today. So you can go ahead and knead some pizza dough or cookie dough along something along those lines. And then for our sieving, you are going to want to use a sieve and you're going to put some flour in there and just kind of practice shaking it through to make sure there's no clumps and to make sure all our ingredients are kind of combining together. And then for our separating, this one's kind of fun. We are going to be separating eggs with our hands. So of course we need to wash our hands before we do that. And then you can go ahead and separate the yolk from the egg white with your hands. Some little pro tips that I've noticed for some of ours in particular our kneading and our separating is when we're kneading, we always want to lightly flour the surface before we begin so that our dough doesn't stick. And we always want to use the heel of our hand and push the dough down and away from us. And we always want to remember we don't want to over knead our dough. So go until the dough has a shiny surface or according to what the recipe says. So if it says do it for five minutes, make sure you're following that. And then for separating, it's always easier to separate our cold eggs rather than our room temperature ones. And then when we're separating more than one egg, we want to transfer the separated whites and yolks to other bowls after each egg. And then that way you always have a clean bowl to start with. So we don't want to add an egg into our already separated yolk. We want to make sure we're using a new bowl for each egg. And then, of course, we always want to make sure that we are washing our hands after we touch the eggs because of like bacteria, like salmonella. We always just want to make sure we do that as we should be doing before we do anything with cooking. So, yeah. Sometimes we may not always have exactly the right equipment or ingredients, which when cooking, that is totally okay because sometimes it leads to some super fun new discoveries. And we are going to learn a little bit more about that next week. So that was a little sneak peek for you. But today, we are going to be learning a little bit more um, fun little kitchen hacks, kind of like the things we just practiced before we made our recipe. So I'm going to go through some of those. A few fun little hacks I'm going to give you are, first of all, I'm going to start with strawberry stems. So have you ever had a hard time pulling off the stem of a strawberry? A little trick for you is if you push a straw up through the middle of the strawberry from the bottom right to the top, just pops the stem right off. And then another thing where I'm going to give you a little tip on here is some sticky liquids. So measuring sticky liquids like honey or molasses can be messy and frustrating because you never quite get all that liquid out of your measuring cup and into your recipe. So instead, if you add a bit of oil to your measuring cup and kind of swirl it around so it coats it, uh, when you pour out your liquid, it will not stick. Pretty cool. And then my last little tip for you, 
is um, fresh eggs. So eggs can last a long time in your fridge. So how do you know if they're still okay to use? So here's a little test for you. If you take a raw egg and place it into a bowl of cold water, enough water to cover the egg, um, if the egg sinks, it's still fresh. And if the eggs float, it's old and might be past its best before date. So. Okay, so this week we are going to be making a wild blueberry grunt, which looks like that at the end. So the prep time is 15 minutes, the cook time is 45 though, and it serves about nine. So it's pretty big. So we're gonna go through our ingredients here. So we need four cups of fresh or frozen blueberries. We have frozen. We need one cup of granulated sugar we have here a half cup of water, a half tablespoon of, or sorry, teaspoon of lemon juice, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And that's for the grunt part. Then for the topping, we need two cups of all-purpose flour. We need a quarter cup of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half tablespoon, teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of butter, and one cup of milk. In your big saucepan, you are going to add your four cups of your frozen or fresh blueberries. You're gonna add your one cup of granulated sugar. You're gonna add half a cup of water, half a teaspoon of lemon juice, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You're gonna mix that all together and you're gonna bring it to a boil. And then mine's not quite there yet, but once you do have it to a boil, you're going to reduce your heat down to a simmer or to low. And you're gonna let that thicken up for about 20 minutes or so. And then we will do the next step. For your topping, you are going to start by whisking together your flour, your sugar, and your baking powder just in a bowl. You can use a fork to whisk it or a whisk if you have one. And then you're going to add in your butter and you're going to dice it into small little pieces and with your fingers you're going to combine that kind of with this motion with the flour and the sugar and then once that's all kind of crumbly looking you're going to go ahead and add your milk and stir that until it's combined and then this is going to be your topping so once your grunt is all cooked you're just going to add about nine little dollops of that all over and we will show you that stuff later once you have both parts of your grunt done, you're going to go ahead and put about nine little dollops of your, I guess, topping on there. And we are going to put this in the oven at 375 for about 25 minutes. Now that we've had our food that we've prepared, we've kind of cleaned up and washed our hands, we're just going to have a quick little discussion about some of the new skills we've learned this week. So in our recipe today, we practiced a lot of our kneading, we've done some of our sieving, things like that. So what are some of the pro tips that you think would be most useful in your kitchen? So if you wanna think about that, I think for me personally, separating the eggs was a big thing that I think I definitely need to work on or even the kneading just little things like that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna kind of reevaluate about this recipe. So was this a new food for you? Uh, could you make this recipe again by yourself? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Why? We are just going to finish off by remembering that practicing these new skills that we learned will help us become better at them and more confident in the kitchen and allow us to make most of these kind of recipes again while using these skills.